come with our faith and with our doubts. And together, we are the body of Christ. We are the church. Today, uh, for those who are physically gathered here, I want to invite you to complete one of these welcome cards um, where if you are in our system and don't have any changes, you can just put your name on it. Um, if you have any changes, you can put those on on the back. There's a place if you wish to have any prayer requests added for next time, um, you can do that. There's also this place where it says questions, comments. And so I've been deliberately asking questions. And today is one of those easier or lighter questions. And that is, we are in the season of pumpkin spice. So what is your favorite item with pumpkin spice? And you can say, I don't like pumpkin pumpkin spice because I understand that too pumpkin spice isn't for everyone if you are a member you can complete uh, you can check in on our realm uh, connect app if you are online with us we ask that you leave a comment or send an email to the office or a phone call and let us know that you are worshiping with us so that we can count you also as here. Your welcome cards and any physical offerings that you have brought with you can be put in the box that is uh, by the name tag uh, place out front to the choir. We have to get you some welcome cards so that you can, but I did place a box by, on your black table so that you can put um, any physical offerings or welcome cards in that. We're going to try and try and make sure that you all feel part of this too, um, since most of you don't walk that way. Um, trying to bring this together. Yesterday we had, uh, I want to celebrate with you, we had uh, the blessing of the animals at the park and with the uh, Humane Society, or now it's called Humane PA, we had a representative from them come, and I blessed 10 dogs and one cat um, to, my, to my count. Um, Judy, I should have checked with you. Judy was my photographer, and uh, I don't know if that's how many you would have, you counted too, but <laughs> she was uh, taking pictures of us as, as we went uh, long and I got a report that one of them behaved very well the rest of the day <laughs> but I I did I did take the um, opportunity to say this is a blessing not an exorcism I don't do those so I can only um, I can't, can't no promises right no promises on that this Saturday we're having another fun event, and that is our Halloween parade and party. We're going to start at 4 o'clock in our main parking lot, and we are encouraging people to come dressed um, in a, a costume or costumed. And we're going to walk um, down here and around. We're going to walk around Westcott and then walk into the main building and I'm not sure which hallways we're walking through. We're definitely going through um, the Ficus and Radcliffe and Young and Gelhard. I think Harvest House is on the second floor. Like hopefully they're down on the first floor and um, we'll be going to see all of those folks and then we're going to end up at the pavilion and that's where the party is. Um, Lars will be there playing music, the ice cream truck is coming, and we'll have some games and crafts and good fun. And there is a wagon ride through the park back to your, ch to your car in the parking lot. So please tell other people about it if you're you know if you're some if you want to stand along the parade route and cheer us on that's always a good thing um, we're hoping that the preschool's been invited um, the community is invited so there's not a limit on this we just hope that 
people come out and have some fun with it. The other thing, yes. You know, I didn't think about that, but we are working with the activities director at Homestead Village, and I bet she will, we have to wear masks to walk through the building. So we will have to wear face coverings to do that. Um, I will talk with her about whether she's providing that or we're providing that. Um, this month, we are also collecting for the Neighbors in, neighbors in Need offering. Um, if you want, would want to give to, if you have envelopes, there's an envelope for that. If you don't, if you um, give electronically, we have, um, if you go to our website and then go to the Give page, if you go to the Vanco link, there's a place where you can choose to give to neighbors in need. It's the last one on the page, but it is there. Otherwise, you could try to <clears throat> leave a comment that you want it to go to neighbors in need. And, um, and that would be appreciated. I am going to be talking a little bit more about what neighbors in need does um, in a little bit. Other people have also asked about uh, hurricane giving towards hurricane relief. Or disaster relief and I did that myself through the PayPal because if you go to the PayPal link there's definitely a place where you can say what you want this to go towards and I just put in disaster relief there all of those good announcements for us but now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our God and those of you at home, I invite you to set your space. Our space is set with our flowers, our candles, our cross, and our Bible. Set your space as we begin our service of worship. And now let us take a deep breath in of the Spirit's presence, which is here as we are gathered, and release any worries, concerns, to-do lists, or other things that are in our way, so that we may be fully present to our God, who is fully present for us. Let us worship our God.
Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the responsive call to worship. Love one another even when love involves risk. We love as God loves us. Love and care for others even when caring is hard. Love in truth and in action. By this we are known as children of God. We have just said that to be known as children of God, of God, we will love in truth and action. Today, our worship centers around our response to God's call to live as Jesus lived and die as he died. We are to live and to die for others. We are to be the voice that calls attention to the need of those who have no voice. We will be exhorted to love in deed and in truth. We will hear again the story of an outsider who believed in Jesus' power. She was a pest. She would not shut up, nor would she be shut out. She would speak. We are called to be the voice of the silenced. Who are they? Who are the powerless today? Who needs our voices to seek justice? Let us pray. God of justice, guide our thoughts and actions. Speak to our hearts as we hear your word today. Guide our choices. Remind us to use our voices for the sake of others. We are not voiceless. We are not helpless, for you abide with us. Grant us courage in the struggle for justice and peace. Empower our voices. May they ring out with your grace as we speak for those silenced by our larger world. Amen. Let us continue this prayer for God's presence and strength as we sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of Abide With Me. It's found in 636 in the chalice hymnal or in the bulletin.
as faithful people, will you join me in saying what we believe and praying about how true it is for us? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We trust in God. We will be strong in our weakness. Christ will be our strength. We are called to be the church, to love and serve others. We are called to be the church, to seek justice and resist evil. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. So this is the time when I like to talk to the young or the young at heart. And today, again, I have chosen a book to read. Today's book is called I Am Love, A Book of Compassion by Susan Verde. When I see someone going through a storm of hurt and unfairness, of anger and sadness, when the sun disappears and the skies grow dark, and I see there is fear, I ask myself, what can I do to let the light back in? I put my hands on my heart and listen, and that is where I find the answer. I have compassion. I act with tenderness. I am love. I can listen, 
and not say a word. I can be there. Love is being present. I can hug and hold and say, we can get through this together. I can speak softly and choose my words and actions carefully. Love is gentle. I can give thanks for all that I have and am able to share. Love is gratitude. I can keep my mind and body safe and healthy. Love is taking care of me. I can express what's important to me. Love is creative. I can know that no one is perfect. Love is understanding. I can do my best to make things better when something is wrong. Love is effort. I can celebrate those I've loved before. Love is remembering. I can find goodness in a kind word, a helping hand, or a shared smile. Love is tiny gestures. I can breathe in the air that the whole world shares and know all creatures are made from the very same stardust. Love is connection. When the clouds roll in, for others and for me, I know there is something I can do. I can let my heart lead the way. I am love. You are love. We are love. And with love, we will weather the storm and light up the sky together. That reminds us that we can listen to that still small voice that is within us, that little bit of sacred that speaks to us in the stillness and in the quiet and reminds us that we are love to be love for others. Will you join me in a repeat after me prayer? Thank you, God, for all your love and guide us so that we will share your love with each person we meet. Amen. Listen to these words of wisdom from the writer to the early church as I read from 1 John 3, 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for brothers and sisters. How does God's love abide in anyone who has world's goods and sees a brother and sister in need and yet refuses to help? Children, the less no love, not in word or speech, but in deed and truth, 
and by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do that which pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit which he has given us. In our gospel reading for today comes out of the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 15, beginning with the 21st verse. Hear this difficult encounter between Jesus and the Canaanite woman. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not fair that the children's food, to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that moment. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this season, we are following this um, series called Be the Church, where we are lifting up different priorities of our denomination, the United Church of Christ. And we're just going right down our banner, and today we are on Fight for the Powerless. And so I want you to think for a moment, who are the powerless of our contemporary world? Who do we think are the powerless? Is it the Ukrainians who are being bombed as they're trying to hold on to their homes? Did you say homeless? I'm so here's me showing my age. I can't hear anything because I'm standing beside the fountain. Immigrants. Immigrants being powerless. That'll come up again later in the sermon. She had a it's like she had a clue. Um, what about the people in that were affected by the Hurricane Ian? who lost everything. Are they the powerless? They might have had beautiful homes, but now they have nothing but a piece of land and a mess. The poorly educated. Linda. The children. I'm 
No. Someone also, after hearing my sermon the first time around, so that might give you a clue, small group of people here that are hearing this for the second time, um, said to me, the Russians, but now wait, the Russians who don't agree with the war in the Ukraine because they don't have a choice to oppose. There are lots of powerless people in our world. And in our gospel, we have a very interesting text. This is, this stands out because Jesus doesn't act the way we expect him to. But this text happens both in Mark and in Matthew. If you don't know that, Mark's gospel was written first and was used as a resource for both Matthew and Luke. And, and so Mark took the story, or Matthew took the story out of Mark, but he changed it a little bit. In both Mark and Matthew, this story comes right after a teaching that Jesus does about on clean and unclean, where Jesus says, it is not what we put into our mouths that make us unclean, but what comes out of our mouths. It is what we say that makes us unclean because it exposes what is in our hearts. The other different, but the difference, so that's the same in both Mark and Matthew. And then we have this story. And so we have to stop and say, well, was Jesus trying to model this for us? Is that why Jesus doesn't sound like Jesus? Because there's no other time when Jesus gives this very you're not good enough to receive my healing response. We really don't know. There's not enough in the text to tell us, so we can't speculate. Or if she caught him on a bad moment, because for his, we say Jesus was fully human and fully divine. So maybe she caught some of Jesus' humanity. We don't know. An interesting difference between Matthew and Mark's version is the identity of the woman. She doesn't get a name either way. But Mark says she's Syrophoenician, and Matthew says she's a Canaanite. Now, we have to remember that Matthew's gospel was written for a Jewish audience. And to the Jewish people, Canaanites are the enemy. Syrophoenicians are kind of like immigrants, okay? They're, they don't belong here. They're from Syria, actually from Phoenicia, and they're probably merchant, maybe. For some reason, they're in the wrong place. They're traveling. But, but Canaanites... Canaanites started, they traced their roots all the way back to Ham, son of Noah, who disgraced his father. So, Canaanites, ooh, they're worse than Samaritans. But we know that Jesus lifted up Samaritans. We know that, that Jesus... He heals Jairus' daughter. Jairus was a, well, depends on which, which version you read, a religious leader, so a Jewish leader, or a Roman. What, what's going on in this text? The only thing we can say for sure is that this woman 
and her persistence and her humility because remember she falls to the ground in front of him and says have mercy she changes his mind he goes from this arrogant position of I'm only come for the lost sheep of Israel to your your daughter will be made well you will receive what you have asked for she changed his mind God has the ability to change God's mind now I want to talk about this woman because she is what I would call a mama bear think about what mama bears do they will defend their cubs at all cost they will do whatever they have to do to protect the cubs including sacrificing themselves. I think this woman is a mama bear. And I think there's mama bears in this room. When it comes to our children, you can do anything to us, but don't you dare touch my child. I learned that after years of doing child care. I always said I should have been a mechanic. Because if you mess with somebody's car, you know, if they bring your car in and they don't fix it right, you go, oh, you're a terrible mechanic. And you walk out and you might tell a few friends and just say, just don't go there. But you mess up somebody's kid. Whew. It's a whole different ball game right and Jesus always is on that side of the powerless you know Jesus went to the Samaritan woman at the well and brings her back into community Jesus went to the demoniac and brings him back into community Jesus was healing people all the time. Didn't care if they had leprosy or not. He was willing to touch them. And yet, there is a movement within our country called Christian nationalism that is not about protecting the poor or the vulnerable but is about power and control and I want to name that it's not Christian even though they want you to think that it is because they want you to think to hear some of their ideas and go Oh, well, that, that, sounds, that sounds right. That sounds like a good thing. We want to be a Christian nation. That sounds like a good thing. Except there's a lot of our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, whom we love and respect, who are not Christian. They are Muslim or Jewish or Buddhist or indigenous And that's not going to be okay. They want to, to change our laws to be based on the Bible and biblical laws. But which ones? Because not all those biblical laws are helpful. I mean, we wear polyester and cotton together all the time. They always forget that that's one of the biblical laws. But, and then I, and that's, that's me being trying to put a little humor in this because I know this is tough to hear. 
right? They want, they want a theocracy. And I'm saying that because then I want you to think about the countries in the world where a theocracy is in place. A theocracy is not a democracy. They are very different. We were not created as a theocracy. We were created as a democracy. And one of the things that they will say is that voting is a privilege. And, and think about that. You, you really have to stop and think about this because even I'm inclined to say, well, sure, yeah, it is a privilege. And I, and I take that privilege. But when they say it's a privilege, that's as opposed to a right. It's, they don't believe voting is the right of every person. It is a privilege for a certain group to vote. We need to be concerned about that. We need to be listening because we are to be the voice of the powerless, of the ones who they're trying to take the vote away from. They're trying to take rights away from. And let us not forget, females in the room, we only got the right to vote a hundred years ago. That sounds like a long time. But compared to history, that's a blink of an eye. There's nothing about that that is helping those who are in need. And that's exactly what our Neighbors in Need offering is about. And I know I just tried to shift you, and I probably pushed you off a cliff before. Now I'm trying to pull you back up and say... But there are things, ways in which we can make a difference. The Neighbors in Need offering began specifically as an outreach to American Indians on reservations. It's the Council for American Indian Ministries, CAME. Um, and a third of the, the money that is collected nationally will, in our denomination will go to American Indian ministries, to helping churches who are on reservations led by indigenous people. As we try to, to do some reparation there also, after putting them on those reservations, the other two thirds this year is going to be go is go goes into justice work and and the specific area that they targeted this year is economic justice, where they will gr give grants from one thousand to ten thousand dollars, focusing all, with an eye towards fair and just wages for all because they are exposing those employers, and I, I hear you, I have employees in the daycare, and I know that I can only pay so much. But there are other people who have the ability and are making the money and aren't paying their workers. There was just a spot on, and I'm saying a few weeks ago, and it, it could have been a month ago by now, on uh, 60 Minutes about, they, somehow they found them 
a group of Asian workers, I don't remember which country they were from, they were in the middle of nowhere, desert all around, and they were forced to work on a marijuana farm. So they were harvesting marijuana, which was being sold now legally places for good money. And these people were out there with no food. They were not being paid. They were left out there to starve and work. Those are the people we need to go after that needs to be exposed. That is contemporary enslavement that's happening today in our country with all of the laws and things that we have. Immigrants are coming in and are being taken by people who make promises that they, do, that they have no intention of fulfilling. Those are the ones we need to go after. So the question ends with, what are we to do? Well, I think that's what we have to sit with in our hearts to sit and listen for that still small voice. Is there a way in which I can make a difference? Is there something that I should be doing that won't contribute to further misery or pain or hurt to another? And maybe even can alleviate some. May it be so. Amen. <laughs> there are daddy. I just got reminded.
you're gonna know it when the Lord stretches out his hand and the people of the Lord get down to pray there's gonna be a brand new song of victory in this land when the people of the Lord get down to pray Amen. In all the ways that we pray, in all of the names that we use for God, let us all pray. So as we consider our lives, the times we have fought for justice and the times we have not, Christ calls us to this time of honesty. Will you join me in the confession of sin? Judge us in your righteousness, Holy One, and show us who we truly are. We yearn for the day when the powerful will no longer deny justice to the weak, and all will be valued as your children, equal in your sight. Show us what it means to be an advocate for those whose voices are ignored, that our lives may shine the light of your justice. God of justice and compassion, may all people realize that they are loved. Grant us courage to be your voice for justice in a world that often is only interested in preserving their power. Remind us to be watching and mindful of those around us who are in need and help us to do what is within our power to alleviate their suffering. Today we think of those among us and our friends who need your love and care. Robin Lucy's nephew Daniel, the Aaron's family, Tim Sterling, Donna Carr's friend Judy, Bernie Fickus, Nancy Payne, John Hess, Jonathan Schaub's friend, the Daniel's grandson Flynn, Barb Steffi, Connor Kendig, the Sear family, Harriet Benchoff, those affected by Hurricane Ian, the people of the Ukraine, and the people of Russia who oppose the war. And for seminarians, faculty, and staff of seminaries as they seek to build church leadership for this new world. We also lift to your care those who are grieving during this season. Chris Conrad and, the, and his family with the death of his sister, and Vera Hawker and her family with the death of Paul. And we give thanks for continued healing experienced by Charlotte Phelps, Nick Sear, Carla Williams' granddaughter, and for the blessings of our church, for the ability to walk with the Bilambila, Janarina, and Yastrub families. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is where we receive the good news. Our God in Christ rejects no one. Rather, all are claimed and loved. Thanks be to God. And now will you stand in body or in spirit as we sing our closing song, This is a Day of New Beginnings. Our time of worship has ended, but our time of service has just begun. So be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. Please be seated.
Uh, yeah, I didn't acknowledge the fact that Cindy accompanied us today. Lars had a day off, so thank you, Cindy. It's good to have you back with us in, in worship again. We are the forgiven people of Christ, so it is our privilege to share the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us go forth in peace. <laughs>